We have the pleasure to receive Bob Ross from Queen University. Bob has been uh, involved with the symposium on exercise and visceral obesity treatment. So Bob, what is the contribution of physical activity and exercise in the treatment of uh, visceral obesity? Well, I think it's a very positive association. Uh, I think we can say with certain certainty right now that certainly if you engage in regular physical activity without any changes in caloric intake, you create a negative energy balance that will be associated with a very robust reduction of visceral adipose tissue. I don't think there's any question about that. I think that's true independent of gender. I think it's true independent of age. Whether it's true independent of race, we have some work to do. So I think it's very positive association. I think it's very, very good news. What about the modality of exercise? What kind of exercise? Well, that's a very interesting question. Of course, we, we don't have uh, as many as we would like good randomized control trials that look at modality and isolate physical activity from uh, caloric differences. But those studies that we do have seem to suggest that while aerobic exercise is associated with a profound reduction, not so much with resistance exercise uh, and visceral adiposity. Now, whether that's because the um, volume of work done with resistance exercise doesn't meet the threshold required uh, to have a, uh, uh, an effect on visceral adipocytes, I'm not sure. Whether it's because our sample sizes are too small and we don't see important changes yet, I'm not sure. But right now, modality seems to matter, and if I were to recommend, I'd recommend aerobic exercise. Well, the question is, what is the dose-response relationship between physical activity and uh, visceral fat? Again, the information that we do have seems to suggest the intuitive observation in, in terms of volume of exercise, that the more minutes you do per week, again, always with the caveat that you don't eat more. So there's negative energy balance created in a dose response way with physical activity, then you seem to get the dose response relationship that you would expect with visceral fat. A far more intriguing and emerging observation is that with respect to the intensity of exercise. So if we control the volume of exercise we do, does exercising uh, for shorter periods at high intensity does that offer benefits to visceral adipose tissue reduction by, uh, by comparison to longer, lower intensity activity? We have more work to do in this area, but the emerging evidence seems to say yes. Higher intensity exercise uh, seems to be a, a, a very happy form of exercise for those visceral adipocytes. They seem to respond very well. And what about exercising without weight loss? that benefits to uh, complication into uh, the uh, uh, visceral obese. Well, again, I, I think as we've been saying for now, geez, almost 15 years, uh, certainly exercise combined with a healthful diet for an extended period of time, it, wherein there's, very, there's no or minimal weight loss, you do get a very robust reduction in visceral adipose tissue. That's the good news, but let there be no mistake. Exercise-induced weight loss is the gold star. You're going to have a greater reduction uh, in response to exercise-induced weight loss uh, than you are exercise without weight loss, but the important observation is both are beneficial. One more than the other, but both are beneficial. Exercise without weight loss is not a failure many benefits associated.